Good morning everyone. It is Wednesday morning, the 31st of March, and we are going to read together John chapter 18 this morning for our Lent reading. So let's hear God's word. After saying these things, Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered the grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, knew this place because Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now with blazing torches, lanterns and weapons, they arrived at the olive grove. Jesus fully realised all that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for? he asked. Jesus the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. And Jesus said, I am he. They all drew back and fell to the ground. Once more he asked them, who are you looking for? And again they replied, Jesus the Nazarene. I told you that I am he, Jesus said. And since I am the one you want, let these others go. He did this to fulfil his own statements. I did not lose a single one of those you have given to me. Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's slave. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. Shall I not drink from the cup of suffering the Father has given me? So the soldiers, the commanding, their commanding officer and the temple guards arrested Jesus and tied him up. First they took him to Ananias, since he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at that time. Caiaphas was the one who had told the other Jewish leaders, it's better that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, as did another of the disciples. The other disciple was acquainted with the high priest, so he was allowed to enter the high priest's courtyard with Jesus. Peter had to stay outside the gate. Then the disciple who knew the high priest spoke to the woman watching at the gate, and she let Peter in. The woman asked Peter, You're not one of those man's disciples, are you? No, he said, I am not. It was cold. Because it was cold, the household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire. They stood around it, warming themselves, and Peter stood with them, warming himself. Inside, the high priest began to asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Jesus replied, Everyone knows what I teach. I have preached regularly in the synagogue and at the temple where the people gather. I have not spoken in secret. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me, they know what I said. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest, he demanded. Jesus replied, if I said anything wrong, you must prove it. But if I'm speaking the truth, why are you beating me? Then an ass bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He, he denied it, saying, no, I am not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, didn't I see you out in the olive grove with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the rooster crowed. Jesus' trial before Caiaphas ended in the early hours of the morning. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside because it would defile them and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went out to them and asked, what is your charge against this man? We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal, I retorted. Then take him away and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way he would die. Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought to him. Are you the king of the Jews, he asked. Jesus replied, is this your own question or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate retorted. Your own people and your leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, <clears throat> my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. 
Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognise that what I say is true. What is truth? Pilate asked. Then he went out again to the people and told them, He is not guilty of any crime. But you have a custom of asking me to release one prisoner each year to, at Passover. Would you like me to release this king of the Jews? But they shouted back, No, not this man. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a revolutionary. Amen. And that's the end of John chapter 18. Jesus' trial before the high priest, although we don't hear anything really about that, and then standing before Pontius Pilate as he gets questioned. But before he got that to that, as he's getting arrested, Peter does something. Peter draws his sword and slashes off the ear of the temple god of the one. We're taught as we grow up about fight or flight mechanism, about the adrenaline that's in our body, and whenever it becomes stressed, how we can either turn on our heels and run, or we can lash out. Peter was obviously stressed by seeing Jesus arrested. This was his Messiah. This was his teacher. And he lashes out. He draws a sword, but Jesus stops him. Jesus does things completely differently from the rest of the world. Jesus doesn't lash out and retaliate whenever people are against him. He reaches out instead with love and peace. And that's what he calls us to do as well. Remember, Jesus taught his disciples to love your neighbour as yourself. And whenever Jesus was asked, well, who is my neighbour? He told that very famous parable about the Good Samaritan, about somebody who was naturally an enemy of a Jewish person, but who helps them and who shows them true love, who puts himself in harm's way, who is left out of pocket because of how he cares for somebody who needs love, who needs care, who needs attention. That's what Jesus wants us to do. We'll be in stressful situations at times. There'll be times where people are against us and maybe there's a natural reaction for us to, to lash out, to be defensive. But we need to follow the example which Jesus set, even here as he's arrested, where he doesn't retaliate, he doesn't head out. Rather, he is calm, he is peaceful, he shows love and restraint. Now we know it's because Jesus knows what's happening. We know it's because it's his fulfilment of scripture. But it's also Jesus' nature. It's his way. And we are called to imitate Christ. That's what being a Christian means, to follow Christ, to follow his teaching, to, to, to learn from his way. And so for us, not lashing out is the Christian way. You know, some of us are very quick, not necessarily with our hands, but with our tongues. And we can lash out and we can say things and it can be very hurtful. And, and sometimes we, we give the excuse, it's just my way. Sometimes we need to stop and think before we speak. We need to be considerate. We need to think how our words will be received. And yes, we can still speak, but it's how we speak, how we answer, how we show that love, which makes all the difference. So today, let's pray and ask God to help us to show that love of Christ to others. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another beautiful day. Beautiful because it's a day that you have given to us. A day that we can relax, a day that we can um, sit in your presence, a day that we can read your word, a day that, that we can show your love. Just a day to enjoy, Father. Uh, because it is a day that you have given to us. In this day, Father, as we interact by speech, by action, help us to show Christ's love. In all of our actions, help us to be considerate, to not lash out, but before we say or do anything, to take a breath. And as we tell our teenagers, Father, and our kids with that simple brace at WWJD, what would Jesus do? Help all of us, Father, to think, what would Jesus do in this situation? How would Jesus respond? And then help us to be Christ-like. Help us to show his love as we interact so that we can bring love and peace into this world and show this world just how much you care for them. So Father, thank you for the day. And go with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks folks for joining in this morning. Great to have you all there. 
Um, trust that today you do know God's peace and blessing uh, and that it is a good day for you. And hopefully for those of you who maybe have stopped school again, you get a bit of a rest this time um, without homeschooling for the rest of us as, as we're getting back into some sort of pattern and routine that we stay safe, but as we do so that we continue to show God's love. So thank you. Join me again tomorrow morning at half nine again. And if you wish, there's a link on our Facebook page for the United Services here in Newton Arts. Um, goes live on YouTube at seven o'clock again tonight. You can link in and tonight. It's our Shail Strain who are leading the service. So until then, take care and God bless.